The introduction of the Precision Runway Monitor, or PRM, will allow simultaneous independent approaches in IMC to the parallel runways here at Sydney Kingswood Smith Airport. Unlike independent visual approaches where the pilot is responsible for maintaining a lookout for aircraft on the adjacent centre line, the PRM uses a new and specialised radar system to warn of any deviation from the final approach. This permits air traffic controllers to issue breakout instructions to maintain separation. There are a few essential differences between an ILS PRM approach and a regular ILS approach. The information contained in this video will assist you to fully understand the ILS PRM approach. The aim of this video is to train crews on the differences between carrying out an ILS PRM approach and a normal ILS approach, to explain the breakout procedure and to detail differences in cockpit setup required for an ILS PRM approach. What you will now see is a cockpit demonstration of an ILS PRM approach with a breakout maneuver. Do we have the Sydney ATIS information? Yes, Captain. Sydney terminal information is Delta. Runway is 16 left and right. Wind 180 degrees at 15 knots. QNH 1007. Temperature 10. Overcast at 300 feet. Visibility 1000 meters. Showers in area. Independent parallel approaches in progress. Expect ILS PRM approach. Independent departures in progress. Thanks. Handing over, I'll brief the approach. I have control. We've been assigned runway 16 right, so I'll brief for that. Sydney runway 16 right, ILS PRM approach. Category 1 minimum, 220 feet. 220 set. Visibility, 800 metres. Special procedures on the All Users page are if we get an ATC breakout instruction, I must disengage the autopilot and hand by the procedure until stabilised on the breakout heading. Now your job will be to acknowledge the breakout instruction and monitor the flight path and speed while we reconfigure the aircraft and set the breakout heading and the assigned altitude. Any questions? Is it possible to get a descending breakout? That's unlikely, but if we have a descending breakout, we will not be required to exceed a rate of descent of more than 1,000 feet per minute. Okay. The ILS PRM user page also specifies that the COM procedure is that when instructed by ADC to call the tower, we must have the tower on number one and the pre-RM frequency on number two. The two? We will only transmit on number one and we'll have to set the volumes about the same. So we just monitor the PRM frequency on the second VHF COM? Yes, that's just in case there is a breakout instruction which is blocked by a transmission on the tower frequency. Okay. The important things to remember are when we call the tower, we must also monitor the PRM frequency and if we get a breakout, I must disconnect the autopilot and turn the aircraft immediately. Once the aircraft is stabilised on the breakout heading, we want to select TARA mode on the TCAS. Understood. I have control. Handing over. Oscar Juliet Alpha cleared for ILS PRM approach runway 16 right. Call tower 120.5. ILS PRM approach 16 right. 120.5. Oscar Juliet Alpha. Okay, monitor the PRM frequency. Volumes the same. All completed. Landing checklist. Go ahead. Speed brake. Arm. Landing gear. Down. Flaps. 25. Landing checklist complete. Breakout alert. Oscar Juliet Alpha, turn right immediately, heading 240. Climb to and maintain 3000. Heading 240, 3000. Oscar Juliet Alpha. Flap 20. Flap 20 selected. Positive rate, gear up. Positive rate, gear up, selected. Heading 240, selected. Altitude 3000. 3000. 
Oscar Juliet Alpha, contact director on 126 decimal 1. 126 decimal 1, Oscar Juliet Alpha. Engage left autopilot. Left autopilot. Director Oscar Juliet Alpha, heading 240, climbing 3000. We have just demonstrated a breakout from an ILS PRM approach. A breakout very rarely occurs, and if you get one, you must respond immediately. Hesitation may mean the difference between a late arrival, a near mid-air collision, or worse. Let's review the ILS PRM system. Advancing technology enables simultaneous approaches to be safely flown to runways more closely spaced than in the past. These approaches are known as precision runway monitor approaches and pertain to parallel runways spaced less than 1,525 metres apart. In addition to the tower controllers, there will be an additional controller for each approach course, referred to as the precision runway monitor controller or PRM controller. The PRM controller can override the tower controller's transmissions at any time if it is necessary to break out an aircraft. The PRM controller uses a new radar display with a resolution far superior to existing equipment. The target update is faster than current approach radar systems. The radar has a predictor line that shows the predicted flight paths for the next 10 seconds and computer-generated warnings assist in alerting the PRM controller when aircraft strays from the approach course towards the NTZ. CFR deviating. The NTZ, or No Transgression Zone, is depicted on the monitor controller's display. The NTZ is 610 meters wide. The monitor controller must issue breakout instructions to any endangered aircraft on the adjacent approach course when an aircraft penetrates the NTZ. As you saw in the previous screen, a breakout is different to a missed approach because it occurs before an aircraft reaches the decision altitude and more importantly requires a different set of procedures than the missed approach. CFR deviating. Keep an eye on Zulu Fox at Romeo, he's going through the localizer. Zulu Fox at Romeo, right indicates you are deviating right of the localizer course. Break them both out. Breakout alert. Breakout alert. Zulu Fox at Romeo. Right Turn left immediately, heading 070. Climb to, climb maintain to maintain 4000. All operators flying into Sydney Airport should train their pilots for ILS PRM approaches. Training and testing should consist of watching this video, reviewing the ILS PRM user instruction page of the AIP or JEPS, and an oral or written test carried out by your company check and training organization or an instrument flight training school. Looking at the approach chart, you will notice that the words ILS PRM are in the title area. You will notice the note on the chart showing that two VHF comms are required for the approach. You must monitor both the tower frequency and the PRM frequency. The ILS PRM user instruction page contains important information about ILS PRM approaches. It is required reading for all pilots prior to flying their first ILS PRM approach. Pilots are expected to have viewed this video on ILS PRM approaches. It is important for pilots to notify air traffic control if they are unable to participate in an ILS PRM approach. If ILS PRM approaches are being used, it will be advised on the ATIS. Your flight path is being monitored and you may need to carry out a breakout maneuver due to an aircraft on the adjacent approach path deviating towards the NTZ. Breakout alert. Oscar Julia if a breakout is required, it is important that the pilot receives the message as quickly as possible and that the pilot reacts to it as quickly as possible on receipt of it. Oscar Julia Alpha. This is the reason for having two frequencies for the approach. The first is for two-way communication, and the second is to receive any messages should the first be blocked by a third party. When PRM approaches are being conducted, the controller will transmit on both frequencies all the time, but the pilots will only reply on the tower frequency. This will prevent any of the controller's information from being lost through over-transmitting. Set the volumes on both radios to the same level.
While for most operations the autopilot will be used during the approach and auto coupling is recommended to minimize deviations, for a breakout alert maneuver hand flying is the fastest option. Simulation studies have shown that pilots consistently initiate the breakout maneuver in less time when disconnecting the autopilot and hand flying the aircraft than when using the autopilot. Unlike a missed approach, a breakout alert instruction can include a descending turn or a climbing turn. In the event of a descending breakout, the pilot is not expected to descend at more than a thousand feet per minute and you will not be assigned a level below the minimum vectoring altitude. Breakout alert. A breakout maneuver requirement will always be prefaced by the phase breakout alert. Pilots flying an ILS PRM approach who get broken off the approach by the PRM controller must assume that a traffic conflict does exist. If the breakout maneuver is not carried out immediately the results could be disastrous. The pilot will have little warning that a breakout alert is about to occur because the aircraft causing the breakout is on another frequency and you will not be able to hear the controller's efforts in returning that straying aircraft to the adjacent localizer. Let's summarize the pertinent differences between a normal ILS approach and an ILS PRM approach. The ATIS will contain the words ILS PRM approach. This is a cue for pilots that ILS PRM approaches are in progress. Additionally, you may hear the preceding aircraft being cleared for an ILS PRM approach. You will have a separate approach plate for the ILS PRM approach. You are required to read the ILS PRM user instruction page detailing ILS PRM approaches before you carry out an approach. The ILS PRM user instruction page will remind you to do the things you normally don't do, such as setting up two COM frequencies and when to monitor the PRM frequency. In addition to the usual items briefed for the ILS approach, include details of the possible breakout maneuvers. In some cases, this may be very different from most learned behaviors. Set the volume on the second radio so that both volumes are at about the same level. This will ensure that if there is a breakout alert, you will hear the transmission. Hand fly the breakout maneuver and carry out the maneuver as quickly as safety permits. When stabilized after the initial maneuver, follow your company standard operating procedures. The purpose of the video is to teach you generic procedures for ILS PRM approaches and to provide you with the awareness to fly these approaches safely. We expected questions on several aspects of this new approach. First, why do we have the descending breakout? Extensive simulation has shown that there are times when the controller has only one tool left, hence the inclusion of the descending breakout. Second, why hand fly the breakout? Again, simulation has shown that hand flying is the fastest way to start the aircraft turning and that turn is the most important element of flying a successful breakout. Let's again look at the breakout procedure. Breakout alert. Oscar Juliet Alpha, turn right immediately, heading 240. Climb to and maintain 3000. Heading 240, 3000. Oscar Juliet Alpha. Flap 20. Flap 20 selected. Positive right, gear up. Positive right, gear up, selected. Heading 240, selected. Altitude 3000. 3000. Oscar Juliet Alpha, contact director on 126 decimal 1. 126 decimal 1, Oscar Juliet Alpha. Engage left autopilot. Left autopilot. Director Oscar Julian Alpha, heading 240, climbing 3000. For more complete information on ILS PRM approaches, call CASA on 131757 or refer to the Aeronautical Information Manual, your company operating procedures, or visit Air Services Australia's website.